So demonetization of November 2016 is undoubtedly one of the most important policy interventions in economic policy of India in the recent times. To begin with, uh, the sheer uh, number of claims that uh, surrounded the announcement were mind-boggling. Uh, it was supposed to uh, reduce the extent of counterfeit currency in the economy. It was supposed to eliminate uh, the circulation of black money in the economy. It was supposed to transform the Indian economy into a cashless economy, a digital economy. So it's obvious that an economist like me was attracted to uh, the discussion surrounding it. One started reading and writing about it. Uh, and what was very significant was that as one read more about it, uh, as one wrote more about it, as one spoke more about it, it became increasingly clear that it was one of the most illogical, unscientific uh, and irrational uh, economic policies ever taken in independent India. Uh, so uh, my attention to demonetization uh, uh, was drawn largely by uh, these claims, these irrationalities and uh, uh, an urge to actually explore uh, these factors uh, in greater detail. So the idea of a book on demonetization was born from this sort of an interest that I developed uh, on the topic. Topic. Uh, the book that I am introducing and editing, we tried to put together a large number of articles published from the 1960s onwards uh, till 2017 in the pages of the Economic and Political Weekly and the Economic, and Week, uh, Economic Weekly, uh, which dealt with the question of black money, tax evasion, demonetization of 1978 and the demonetization of 2017. So this book is very different from other books that have appeared on the subject already. Uh, it covers a longer time period and it also covers covers a larger canvas of topics compared to the other books, particularly in respect of taking a long historical perspective on the generation and evolution of the question of black money in the Indian economy. Uh, let there be no mistake on this. Uh, demonetization's two major impacts were one, it led to or it contributed to a sharp recessionary spiral in the Indian economy. The Indian economy was already slowing down by the time demonetization was announced and there is no doubt on it uh, among economists. But what demonetization did was to uh, push it uh, very sharply into this recessionary spiral and that is very clear from the uh, uh, data on uh, gross value added and gross domestic product released by the CSO uh, uh, in the over the last few months you will actually see that even though uh, the growth rates of uh, gross value added appeared a bit resilient in the third quarter of 2016-17, uh, if you take the fourth quarter of 2016-17 as well as the first quarter of 2017-18, the growth rates have dipped very sharply. The growth rate of the GDP uh, as on the first quarter of 2017-18 uh, year on year was about 5.6%. So that's the kind of recessionary spike into which the Indian economy has moved into thanks to the demand compression induced by demonetization. Uh, the second important impact of demonetization has been on the livelihoods of people. Poor people everywhere, uh, wage workers, women, uh, elderly, uh, manual workers in construction, farmers, all these are uh, sections of the population which are significantly adversely affected by demonetization take each category of these uh, of these of this population farmers uh, they were faced with uh, very low prices for their kharif harvest of 2016-17 they had to put in uh, they had to mobilize uh, enormous amounts of money while the cash crunch was going on in order to complete their rabi sowing. Uh, the decline of prices across crops, mostly fruits and vegetables, uh, led to a sharp fall of incomes of farmers. Uh, and even though uh, the value added in agriculture appears resilient as the official data would show, uh, the incomes of farmers are not uh, uh, have not moved in line with the uh, with the movements of the gross value added uh, in agriculture. Uh, look at workers in the uh, non-agricultural sector. There has been a loss of jobs 
across the informal sector. Uh, uh, there has been a disruption of supply chains in production across the board, both in the organized sector and in the unorganized sector. Large parts of the organized sector are deeply connected with the informal sector. So there has been a loss of jobs there as well. All sections of the population, which, are, which you could call as either poor or vulnerable, their lives were thrown into despair and misery by demonetization. You know, there are some aspects of demonetization uh, which will certainly have a long-term impact. As I mentioned earlier, uh, supply chains have been disrupted across the board in the organized and unorganized sectors. And we are not clear as to how much time it will take to rebuild uh, these uh, these uh, chains. Some aspects will have medium-term consequence, of course, because as remonetization proceeds, uh, there will be a demand that will be generated in the economy again, and some aspects of uh, supply in terms of production and sales will indeed pick up, and the economy uh, might limp back into normalcy. The damage is certainly not temporary. The damage is long term much of the damage is permanent and it is not clear at all as to when the economy will revive itself it is not clear at all as to when these disrupted chains will actually be reinstated and the employment incomes of people will come back to pre-demonetization levels Now, trust is the foundation on which much of the capitalist society that we see around us is structured. What demonetization did was to strike at the very roots of this trust uh, by withdrawing the notes of 500 and rupees thousand over a short time interval of three or four hours. Now, this loss of trust where the government refused to uh, uh, fulfill the promise of paying the bearer the value of the currency that he or she had in hand was very significant, is very significant. The very credibility of, on which our monetary system has existed over the uh, past few years has been uh, violated. And uh, it's unclear as to when and how the Reserve Bank of India can actually uh, come back to the people with the same amount of trust and credibility that existed pre-demonetization. So farmers were faced with very low prices and hence very low incomes. Uh, what this did was that it had a reverse multiplier impact on the rural economy of India. Uh, demand fell very sharply and the sales of uh, commodities uh, that are uh, sold in the rural areas fell very sharply. Trading was disrupted significantly and the rural economy of India was crippled by the cash crunch induced by demonetization. Uh, I think the full story of uh, how demonetization impacted the rural areas of India, how it impacted the lives of farmers is yet to be uh, analyzed and documented adequately. Uh, I think the uh, overall macro numbers that are put out on growth rates of agriculture simply do not capture the extent of disruption of livelihoods that, it, that demonetization has created and uh, engendered in uh, the rural areas of India. Uh, similar is the case with non-agricultural sectors of India, which is largely predominated by the unorganized and informal sectors. The employment in a range of occupations uh, uh, fell. A very large number of uh, production units stopped production. They were shut down. Uh, and uh, workers in these enterprises lost their jobs or were faced with very low amount of wages. Many migrant workers left pockets of immigration, went back home uh, because of lack of jobs. So you would see in, in look at look at look at uh, sectors as uh, 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 common as uh, shopkeeping, uh, construction work, small trading, and and contract labor in even a uh, uh, sort of uh, an enterprise like uh, like movie shooting for example you know in a range of areas you will see from what you what you would otherwise consider as important to uh, uh, sectors that you would otherwise consider as not so important and all of these sectors were affected very adversely 
by the demand compression uh, uh, engendered by demonetization's cash crunch. And there were loss of jobs, loss of livelihoods, and loss of social security for the poor or vulnerable across India. That has been the impact of demonetization on the livelihood part of the story. The victory in Uttar Pradesh and Uttaranchal uh, allowed the Narendra Modi government to claim that demonetization was actually a success and people had accepted demonetization as a successful economic policy intervention. Uh, in, in my view, uh, an analysis of how demonetization affected or influenced people's minds have to be conducted on at two levels. Uh, first, you have to understand that demonetization had all the ingredients of a typical right-wing populist offensive and uh, uh, if, if you look closely at it it was disguised as uh, uh, something like an anti-elite and pro-poor uh, it had very clear elements of the demonization of the other if you look at uh, uh, the countries uh, from where uh, the, the counterfeit currency was supposed to come from uh, the communal tinge to that demonization of the other was very clearly uh, visible uh, you could uh, also invoke terrorism uh, as part of uh, the the claims related to demonetization. There was also a pretense of modernity built into the narrative thanks to the ushering in of uh, the cashless economy. All these are built into or embedded into a hyper-nationalist discourse. You know? So uh, uh, demonetization was not just an announcement of withdrawal of 500 rupees and 1000 rupee notes. It was a classic right-wing populist offensive, which will certainly have a particular kind of impact on how people would take it, how people would perceive uh, that kind of a measure. Uh, so we should not uh, forget uh, this uh, level of analysis when we look at demonetization and how it might have influenced people's minds in Uttar Pradesh and Uttarakhand. But at a more grounded level, if you see, uh, while the BJP uh, did win Uttar Pradesh and Uttarakhand elections, it lost Punjab. It could not get a majority in Manipur or Goa. So there were uh, uh, examples from other states uh, that you could always cite to show that the BJP did not have a smooth coup at the elections in March 2017. Uh in fact, uh, there was a conscious downplaying of demonetization uh, in the election campaign uh, by the Bharatiya Janata Party. And what actually uh, attained some kind, some kind of upper hand or predominance uh, was not demonetization, but the whole debate related to Shams Shamshan versus Khabaristan, uh, Ramzan versus Diwali. Uh, these were the narratives which the BJP gave uh, predominance to uh, in uh, the campaign uh, in March 2017.